You're listening to Second Mass Report, the Falling Skies podcast, and this is episode, season five, episode three, called Hatchlings. Thanks so much for downloading once again. I am your host, Frank Stella, along with... Rob Southgate. And uh, before we say really anything about the show, um, I've got a series of disclaimers to make. Uh, Uh, Oh, no! Not the least of which is apologies for the delay in the recording of this episode, but... uh, my life has just been like crazy. I mean, from my sleep schedule to not having a car to just all kinds of jobs and responsibilities. I don't even know what day it is. And I'm just like trying to catch up with things. So here I am. Here we are like a week and a half late on this episode. So, but the apologies. good news is you'll have two episodes back to back. That so might we'll, be a bad thing. Because we'll post how, one tonight, and we'll post one on probably Friday morning. So those of you that listen, you'll get two this week, which is cool. It is cool. It's like that. Uh, it's like when they do like a, a Sunday and then a Thursday in, in your football, you know, watching the NFL. It's like, oh, there's two games this week, kind of. But then there's like a week and a half without one, and it's kind of a bummer. So right. we've already survived the week and a half without, and now here we go with the, right. the back-to-back. So... Chris Cross. Anyway, uh, let's see. What other disclaimers do I have? Uh, you said I, you had a whole series of them. I'm waiting. I, I kind of have a sore throat. Um, so there's that. Also, um, what? Oh, okay. So being delayed as we were and not being able to see the shows live, I went to the TNT uh, app or, or website to watch the you know post of the episodes, thinking it would be relatively smooth. And hassle-free, especially as it was in, you know, other years when I, you know, went back to watch the episodes online. Well, I have a little rant to make against TNT. Little, oh, Frank, little, throwing barbs out there already? A little call-out right now, because this needs to be said. I go to TNT's website on my phone, and it doesn't let me... It lets you, like, see all the episodes, but it doesn't let you, like, watch them. If you try to watch them, it directs you to downloading the app from your app store which I don't really have a problem with. Um, I mean, I get that they need app downloads, so that's fine. But this app is really uh, shoddy, and it's got like one and a half stars out of five out of the reviews. All the reviews are like really bad and saying, uh, well, pretty much everything true, but um, it's just, it just seems underdeveloped. It seems maybe kind of rushed. It seems kind of immature. Um, And of course it makes you uh, sign in from your... um, you know, your uh, satellite or cable carrier so that, uh, you know, otherwise you you can't really watch the episodes unless you are subscribing to basic cable. Right, right. Whatever, which I am, so that didn't really stop me, but that's what a lot of people's complaints were on. Anyway, to get to the point, um, please trying to watch through these episodes, like, there was just, first of all, a ton of commercials, like, more than on regular TV, which I don't think there should be. I think there should be fewer, but since it's not regulated and not really timed, they guess they feel the freedom to just stick, like, you know, 30 minutes of commercials in there. And so it took, like, an hour and 15 minutes to watch an episode when I was expecting it to take maybe, like, 45, 46. So there was that. Anyway... Um, the placement of the commercial breaks was like really awful. Um, they were always like 30 seconds later than they were supposed to be. So it'd be like into the next scene and then suddenly it would just cut out and go to like three minutes of commercials and it's like, and then it comes back and like, it like skips forward and you kind of feel like you missed something. So sure, sure. all that to say is a disclaimer that like, there may be things that I missed because watching the episode, I was kind of going like, I feel like I missed something. So there might be a lot of confusion on my part. Perfect. And it took so long for us to get to this that I've lost my notes. So there'll be a confusion on everybody's part. Oh my gosh. This is going to be such a mysterious podcast. (laughs) It's going to be excellent. People that listen (laughs) to us are, well, they know we're either going to go off topic or not know the topic. So I think this is par for the course. It's funny to me because like we have this thing in live radio where, you know, whatever happens, you just have to go with it because you can't go back and edit. You you know, it, it just got broadcasted. So that's what makes live radio very fun when things are kind of falling apart. But this is almost like the reverse because we're not live. I mean, everyone who's listening is listening to us recorded. So it isn't as though we didn't have the chance to clean things up, but things are just such a mess. that. Uh, like, but I never clean them up, Frank. <laughs> well, I just I don't know how to fix this. Like I, we're already a week and a half late. <laughs> Things don't make sense. I know how. Wait, listen. 
no, no, we just went in a time machine. We are right on time. All of you need to set your watches back seven days. Rob, you've been spending too much time at Blue Box. (laughs) (laughs) No kidding. You are not a time lord. No, but I'm a companion. Okay, well... Well, we'll go with it. Anyway, we should just jump into this episode because it's been like a, what, like a seven minute intro? Yes. Yes. I thought you had more disclaimers. So uh, let's get into it, man. I think three is enough. I uh, think so. Um, all right. Well, it, this episode was very interesting to me because, first of all, it was probably the darkest episode I think I've ever seen. Just incredibly dark. So many dark things happened. So many dark things were said. I just like, like every scene I would go, whoa. That yeah. was dark. Well, you know what? I think that's what we're in for. We've got six episodes left. Uh, because we are so late, and I have seen the next episode, I'm not going to reference anything in it, but let me just say we're in for a very dark ride going forward. Uh, and I can tell. It's that feeling of there's a storm coming, and yep. it's already kind of coming. And <laughs> Um, yeah, so, but very, very many dark things. My other first impression, um, and this is where the disclaimer comes in, because I kind of, like, when this episode started, like, really from the moment it started, I went, did I miss something? I felt like I missed a conversation, or I missed a scene. Wait, with what? Because at the beginning, it was the, it was directly after they had seen that field with all the, the bugs. No, and see, it couldn't have been directly after because all of a sudden they had this like napalm or whatever they sprayed on them. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, like, I think it was listen, they, in the last they episode. It ended with them seeing this field. Right. This one started, and they were going to deal with it. So, I mean, that could have been right, right. And I felt like I felt like I missed something. I felt like there was an important conversation or battle plan that maybe either got cut out of the footage and it just didn't fit, or it was just poorly written. And I felt like it just left me feeling like, wait a minute. I've missed something. And yeah. that was one out of several examples of feeling like I've missed something. But again, disclaimer, I may have actually technically missed something. Right, you may have actually. TNT's app, which by the way, TNT, get your act and your app oh, together. Oh, you should have just gone with get your app together. You are apt to get your act together with don't, your app. Don't be an app hole. Get this fixed. Are you feeling tired? There's a nap for that. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, you know what? Sorry, everybody. Disclaimer number 73. <laughs> Frank's off his game tonight. Or maybe he's on it. <laughs> Fair I, warning. I am so on right now. You think of that I'm not. Oh, man. All right. Well, that, that's not appropriate. Let's move on. Oh, all right. So um, so the episode starts, and I'm already feeling like I've missed something. But, but so I'm – and this goes back to just kind of another first impression of the episode because – I had this kind of annoyed feeling throughout, partly due to the app, but partly due to like, wait, am I seeing bad writing here? Did something get cut that shouldn't have? I'm kind of feeling a little frustrated, coupled with some things I saw that were just very interesting to me. I was like, whoa, this is very compelling writing. This is very compelling storyline content. Like, um, just the, the, and some, some new things that we haven't seen before, or, or they haven't gone to that level of depth before. And so it, it really, I think had a lot of, um, really great payoffs and very compelling moments that just made it very watchable. So it was basically <laughs> annoyed mixed with, I love this. Yeah. All at the same yeah. Time. Well, you know what? I, I have a theory on what we're seeing here, uh, because there's only 10 episodes, right? Right. I think that because they, I think last season was 12. Correct. And I think that because they only had 10, they're taking certain elements that they would have been able to develop a little bit more and they're rushing through them. So in this episode in particular, I felt like we had some really great character moments, you know, and we did have some nice depth, but there were times where it would just sped through things. One example was the Brian and his sister thing. That What a plot device. I mean, they, 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 you know, here's this skitterized human Brian. He seems like a threat. Uh, they did, they, they brought this back. I thought this girl was going to be important to the story. You know what? Dead, gone. She's out of the picture. I don't know if she's coming back. I don't know if they even need her anymore. It was just very rushed how they did that whole Brian thing. And this was a, an interesting element that was added. Yeah. And again, with one of the major dark, uh, events and themes in this episode. So I guess we can, I guess we can start there. Um, being that, uh, 
as I've said in previous podcasts, uh, I'm not a fan of these storylines that they kind of pick up and then they kind of kill off without really kind of going anywhere. Right. And, and back in season four, I kind of thought that's might be what we see, might be what we're seeing with the uh, the skitterized humans. And then, to be honest with you, I didn't think that payoff with Genie was. Deserving. I, I thought that 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 storyline deserved more of payoff, right? And I and agree. more and, and to see more of how that all played out and what became of that going forward. And so when the season five started, I thought like, yeah, here we go again. That's going to be another thing that they just don't bring up or whatever. So the fact that they brought that kind of back around, uh, and that and was with, satisfying. I'm glad they did with a payoff that had a little more satisfaction. Yes, uh, I agree. I but they rushed that, through it. They did rush through it, but I, I thought that that was okay. And I'm, I'm okay with them rushing through something that's just like a character we don't know. I'm not okay with them rushing through something like Denny, where we've really come to like her, and then, oh, she's back. Oh, she's dead. And, oh, okay, what? Yeah, right. Like, what not, happened there? Not a and, fan Well, of talk about a plot device. I mean, the whole Denny thing seems to be a motivating factor for Anthony. Right. And it's like... Yeah. That, and wow, another dark. <laughs> yeah, dark and a plot device. I mean, they, they, you know, he's so motivated by it now that it's like, well, wait a minute. She wasn't important enough for you to really do anything with last season. And now it's, it's made this character nuts. It's, it's kind of odd. Okay. And now couple that with Tom's uh, whole rage speech. And I think for the first time, and as you know, I'm a fan of, the rage syndrome and and its uses but i think kind of now we're starting to see where that's starting to kind of bite them in the butt a little bit here and there yeah with you know the way anthony's acting right uh and the way that it's like a hyper kid he's all whipped up right now but this episode really brought to light and almost kind of quietly but it brought to light some of the ways in which Tom has changed, uh, this isn't the Tom that we've known the first four seasons. He's he's saying things that, like, old Tom wouldn't have said. And, and even Weaver kind of pointed that out when he said, like, I remember a time when you would have gone back. For- that, that was right at the end. Right at yeah. the very end. That was a very compelling line. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, watching the next episode, those words rang in my head a lot. Uh, that, and and that's not spoiling anything. I'm just saying because of the weight of what he said, it kept ringing through as I was watching. And I think that that is going to be true throughout the rest of the series. Now, here was another line that absolutely shocked me. And it it was so, part of what made it so shocking was that it was just so, it just came out of nowhere and just kind of was left at that. It was when Ben was offering to kind of go head to head with the overlord. And Tom said to Ben, if he, if I hurt him, it's going to hurt you too. And Ben said, yeah, I get that. But you know, I'm, I'm okay with that for the sake of, you know, the war. And what Tom said next just absolutely chilled me when he goes like, yeah, I get that. Like, that's not what I care about. I just want to know, can you outlast him? Oh, really? I didn't catch that. Oh man, that was the darkest moment like in Tom Mason history. Because he just he just didn't even flinch. He didn't care about Ben. All well- he cares about is taking care of this overlord. You know, that's interesting. But let, because- let me just let me just say let me just finish this thought. Because Tom um was just he's so enraged and obsessed with th- winning the war as quickly and as effectively as possible, and I don't fault him for that but it comes to a point when you are so willing to just so lightly just lay your son on the altar like that i mean that was dark and and a second later he goes wait forget i said that and i'm like uh or i shouldn't have said that or whatever he said there but go if you haven't seen that or you don't remember that go back and watch that because that was a huge moment and the fact that it was it wasn't it was a huge moment but what made it so huge was the fact that it was just so light. You know, it, it wasn't it wasn't anything that was a, a, a ceremonially propped up uh, line. It just right, was right. out of it, nowhere. It's it was like, just Whoa. something he threw out there. Yeah, that's it was like that's Tom, interesting. You I didn't realize what that. you just said. I mean, that was that well, was huge. It, what's interesting about that is the perception that has been there that that Tom protects the Masons. And the fact that he's willing, you know, before it would have always been like, I don't want you in the front lines. I don't want this. But he allows it. Here, what you just said is him saying, 
I'm going to throw you right on the front line because priority number one is getting rid of this overlord. Yeah, and I don't care about your well-being. I care about can you get me the result I need. That, that was, is that, really interesting. Yeah, it was crazy. So watch that again, and if you didn't catch that the first time, like it will chill you. I mean, when you think about what, like the, the way he's changed, and so that that was brought to light there, and that's why I say kind of quietly because it wasn't very ceremonial, but it was just like, whoa, yeah. Now I'm starting to see where this whole rage thing and obsession might not be so healthy all around. <laughs> Well, I think it's it's leading us towards what I've been saying. There is going to be a Mason dead by the end of this series. One more thing I want to say about Tom and something that was brought to light. When he came back and uh, kind of stood over Pope there towards the end and said, hey, you know, we're, we want, we're grieving with you too. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, I thought that was very weak of really it technically wasn't an apology at all. Because Tom, I think Tom knows somewhere deep down inside, we could have saved her and we could have also accomplished what we need to accomplish. Like, we could have gone after our people and then blown up that whatever. So I, I, think, I think he doesn't care. I think he thinks... Right, exactly. Which that, is why he didn't this apologize. Was the choice. He yeah. didn't apologize to Pope. He didn't say, I'm sorry. He didn't say, I was wrong. Like, there was no remorse. There wasn't any regret. There was grief, but there wasn't regret in a way where Tom was, like, reaching out to Pope in a in a in a way that demonstrated really any integrity, I don't think. I mean, it was a nice gesture, but like the the Tom that we've known the first four seasons has more integrity than to just be like, "Oh, hey, buddy, you know how you holding up?" Like he would have leveled with him and said, "Yeah, like like had a conversation with him." He just uh, dismisses yeah. it. He's just like, "This was my decision. Hey, I'm sorry this happened this way. That's it." Yeah, it's, like it's oh, very insincere. Yeah, like well, this sucks. Oh well. All right. Let, war. Let's throw this one out there because we're we're talking about it. But this episode killed me. It was I watched it with Martha, and both of us were dying because Sarah was one of our favorite characters. Right. To have to, I mean I didn't see this coming. To have her not only die but die that way in that crap in the ground, and then all those those bugs, the ones that have the human eyes that they found all over her. And then Pope blasts him with the, the, the fire. Now, she didn't burn. I thought that was kind of weird. I thought, like, her skin would have been all burned up. Let me let me back up the truck and just humor me for one yeah, second. Yeah. Because me watching on my phone in a dark room, I did not see at all what killed her. All I saw was Pope running up to her and, like, blasting his uh, uh, flamethrower and me going, what am, what am I not seeing here? You're just telling me there's a, there were those bugs? The bugs swarmed her. I did not. And I that's why not. why he blasted her with the flamethrower. Because I mean, maybe she my was, phone was too dim or something. I don't know, but I was, like, couldn't see it. They were swarming her when he ran up, and she looked like she was already dead. And he, he did the flamethrower, and that's what made them all go away. And then he went up to her, and she was... She was already dead. I mean, she wasn't. She talked to him, but she was. There was no saving her at that point. And whatever that is going on underneath the ground there, he wasn't yanking her out of there at that point. If he had been able to pull her out earlier, yeah, she may have lost her legs, but she would have survived. She was, was dead from whatever was going on underground, and then those bugs were all over. And I don't know what those things do, man, but they were. That's what was happening. Okay. Well, that's that was very compelling. Um, yeah, and to have her die like that. Now, I think you and Martha are probably a bigger fan of the character than I am. I don't dislike her, but like she never like I never like loved her. Um, but but yeah, very compelling. And I'll tell you what, like I had a total Rob moment. Uh, I actually predicted it. Oh, no, did you? As soon as as soon as Pope said. I'm not going to let you die out here. And you oh, you know, you're like, mark my time. words, she's dead. Oh, dude, I was like, <laughs> oh, dude, I know exactly what's going to happen. In my head, I said, before before that scene ended, before he ran off, I said, she's going to die, and then Pope is going to break bad. 
<laughs> I said which, that. Which is the name of the next episode. <laughs> right, right, right. Because I saw that coming. I was like, this is how why Pope's going to break bad because she's going to die. And we right, said that. Like, right that, after he promised her, I will not let you die. I was like, oh, I know exactly what's about to happen. We said that back at the beginning of the season before we had looked at the episode titles. And I don't know if we said it before we jumped on and recorded. I think we did, though. I think it's recorded. That when we were talking about predictions like that i was saying i think hal's gonna die we didn't i didn't say sarah but we did say that pope is going to something dramatic is going to happen with pope he's going to break bad or he's going to rise up and be the leader and see i didn't see he's not going to rise up to be the leader i don't see breaking bad as i don't see the concept of breaking bad if you will as being something where you're rising up and being a leader i think it's kind of where you're more kind of you're, yeah, letting, if, you're letting go of standards and you're kind of just burning out. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, we, we know that now as we've gone forward, but we were predicting what could happen with Pope throughout the season. And that was right. something that we had said was it was it was he wasn't going to be in the middle. He was going to be a polarizing character one way or the other. Either he was going to be end up being a hero of the story or he was going to be a bad guy, a a very bad guy, because he started out as a bad guy. And then we came to, you know, bring him in and just see him as kind of the, the opposite side of Tom Mason. Now I think, I think he's so far the opposite. I think he's going to end up being a bad guy. Cause he's, I mean, he's hating Tom and I think rightfully so. I think Tom just showed him so much disrespect. Uh, he, he, you know, even if he had approached it differently at the moment where it was like, and and just explain to him, this is what we have to do. But you know what? I'm. Can we send somebody with you? They had one vehicle. Okay, so you got one vehicle, but how else can we manage this? There was no management. It was we're doing our thing, and then we'll come to you after. And and Pope knew she's dead if we don't go there first. Yeah. And and so I think Pope was thinking when he was running back, like, I'm going to be driving back out to her because, like, this is so important that whatever else is going on, like, and, and really, not priority. Let, let's think about it for a second. I mean, yeah, they were going to the farmhouse where they thought that the overlord was and that there were all those Ashveni coming out of the, you know, woodwork. I mean, really, did it have to be right at that moment? I mean, th- there's been an invasion. It's not like that's going to be the, the, the thing that turns the tide for them. Um, yeah, you can wipe out a whole group, but if you, if you showed up a half hour later, there's still going to be a fair amount of those things in there, breeding or whatever they're doing, and you could take care of them at that point. So I think it was a very bad choice on Tom's part, and I think it was Tom just being full of himself, like, hey, man, I am now the leader. I am, what did they call him? At one point, did they call him the Mason Militias? Like I, this is, they're naming things after me. Well, that's a whole other thing that to me, I feel like I missed something. Um, but yeah, I, do we want to make any other points about Tom? I think. No, I think we got that pretty good. Yeah. Um, so here's, here's another thing where I felt like, wait a minute, did I miss something? Cause I thought the last time that they had talked about the militias was that they like, okay, that's cool, but everything's unorganized and we, you know, we're not really prepared to like organize everybody and reach out to them. Then all of a sudden this episode starts and it sounds like Tom is sending them messages and they're calling themselves Mason militia. Yeah. Why, why are these groups in these other parts of the world calling themselves Mason militias? I'm sure, you know, there are probably other leaders in these other areas that if they're still surviving and they're fighting back, there's probably a Mason in each group. Well, again, what, but there's, yeah, I agree with you, but what else am I missing? Like we went from, Oh, no one's contacted these groups. We've just, we've observed them. Yeah, but... You know what we're missing? We're, we're, we're rushing. Cause it's the end of the series. <sighs> All right. That's what we're just, rushing. Let right me there. just say this. If that's true, 10 episodes, you can, you can tell a very complicated and very good story right. in 10 episodes without biting off more than you can chew. Because when you bite off more than you can chew, it's no longer a good story. It's right. It, you have the makings of a good story, but if you're biting off more than you can chew, then you're, you're losing quality in, in favor I'm, of quantity. I'm thinking they had it mapped out as a 10, uh, 12 episode story. They got 10 
they had to cut certain places and they're they're just moving a few things along quickly to then, get to the point that Pope breaks bad. Uh, just like that Brian story. That didn't even need to be here. The skitterized human. Right. They could have made reference to it, but they didn't need that sister and brother. They didn't need any of that. That took up time that they didn't need to waste. One way to kind of maybe wrap up or round out the humanized uh, skitterized humans or humanized skitters or whatever you want to call them, humanized skitters, um, is maybe just show them like in formation along with other skitters. Oh like, yeah, alongside. make it so that when when they're attacking uh, them, remember when they're they're just flooding into the city, right. that you see some of them clearly are skitterized humans. That would have been that would have been very easy and creepy uh, and weird and added a lot of weight to it. Yeah, and it, and you could have made a, a a story about do we fire at them? Yeah, and see, if, if that would have been a much better story, and that's where Anthony can go nuts and start shooting the skitterized humans from their thing, you know, with, without remorse. Where you can get that same rage, you can still get that like, wait a minute, we didn't even get to make a decision here. Instead, they made it one character. They named him Brian, which is kind of awesome, and they had this sister. We didn't need any of that. All of this could have been accomplished in in five minutes instead of twenty minutes of our time. And it was and it might dramatic. Have given us time to make some of these other things flesh out a little. And it had dramatic value, but honestly, we had enough dramatic value in this episode. Like we didn't need yeah. that side story. We we all we needed was at at this point was the Sarah and Pope story because that was gut wrenching. And not that I not that I minded the story, but I'm just saying that if we're seeing those side stories play out while we're missing vital pieces of information, yeah. that's not okay. Right. Right. So anyway, I'm I'm still a little bit confused because apparently Tom has been communicating to I, I know this was very strange. Various other militias around the globe and I don't I'm I'm missing something. I, how did how did that happen? How did that play out? When did that start? What does it mean? I'm missing something. Um, and I'm and I'm if you're with missing, you, man. Okay, if you're missing it too, then I'm gonna feel like that that's good for me because that doesn't mean that I'm missing something because my eyes are closed. It's it's on it's on the writers. Um, so I feel a little bit vindicated, but more frustrated too. <laughs> yeah. Once again, I think it was just kind of rushing things is what we were seeing, and we're maybe they're just making the assumption that hey, you know what. There is this worldwide interconnectivity at this point because of the Vuln, because, you know, they've been starting to get this reach. We're just supposed to make assumptions that there's communication, but I I think it was rushed. And apparently they're going to Washington, D.C., or at least what used to be Washington, D.C. But are they? I mean, here we've got them going on the road again I, with only six episodes left. Are they going to Washington? Well, they're saying they're going to Washington. And, uh, I mean, to me, I'm going... You're going there basically just to investigate what's going on, or are you like moving the entire group there? Like I'm, I'm a little yeah. Bit and if you're moving the whole group there, are you going to get there and then we're just going to have a big final battle because you guys showed up and fought with them? It's very weird, man. I don't know why that seems to be kind of muddy too. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on, and there's some things I feel like if there were a little less going on, but a little more, if if there were a little more quality and a little less quantity to everything going on, I I think I'd be way more satisfied with these episodes. Yep, I'm with you. Like Spider Man Three, where like so much nonsense is going on that like whatever could have been good just kind of turned to mush. Yep, I'm I'm with you. But uh, at the same time, though, like I said, this episode was extremely enjoyable in other ways that were very gut-wrenching, as you put it, compelling, as I like to say. Uh, just a lot of things going on. Um, we had one scene with, uh, and this was, in my opinion, pretty dark, uh, one scene with uh, Matt and that girl with the hair, and they were kind of goofing around talking about like what they would, you know, how they're going to change when, you know, the new world and whatever. And they're talking about, I don't know. They talked about like some kind of serious things, some kind of more goofy things. And all of a sudden uh, the girl goes, well, can we, uh, you know, solve death or whatever? Or yeah. Can we? Right. And uh, I was just like, wow. Hi, darky. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't sound good. <laughs> oh, but it's true. Um, <laughs> so the point is, uh, another really dark comment that, and, and coming from the kids too, I felt like that was a little bit, uh, dark and compelling as the words I've been using, you know, 
over and over again. Well, they're the right words. These episodes. But yeah, just over and over again, every scene had its little nugget of darkness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I think the only other thing in this episode that we haven't touched on, well, we've touched on it, but we might as well talk about it a little bit, is the Anthony thing. Yes. Uh, more I mean, darkness in more ways than one. Well, in a big way. I mean, this went from a character that, remember, I was distrustful of him a couple of seasons ago. I thought he was the one with the eye thing. Uh, oh, you were you thought Anthony was the mole. Yeah, yeah. And then we came to go, okay, well, he's not, and he's kind of on the up and up, and, you know, he's a soldier, and he's doing a good job and everything, and we've seen him acting angry and weird here, but he's just flipped. I mean, he's just completely taken it into his own hands. Uh, he's so distraught over Denny's death that he's like doing this. And I'm going, wait a minute. This is a guy that's been around so much death and so much of this. Why was it Denny's death, especially when this character was not really around last season? Right. So that's something where, uh, and it's interesting because for four seasons and kind of like Tom, like Anthony and Tom are both kind of experiencing a lot of the same things, I think, in like sort of different ways and different for different reasons and different causes, but they're following kind of the same arc where for four seasons they've had very much uh, integrity and leadership and very level headed, very, uh, uh, very wise. And all of a sudden it seems like in season five, for whatever reason, they're kind of throwing that to the wind a little bit and just giving themselves over to rage and in some cases, not the best decision making. Um, so it's interesting that they're both kind of taking that path. And so for Anthony, I'm a with you there. And I was a little bit going, wait a minute, why are you having PTSD right now? Like why now? Why now? After everything we've and seen, I'm not, I'm not, uh, and then Lexi's not, death triggers this. That seems, or Denny's. I mean, that's weird. Right. And see, I'm not a licensed psychologist i i'm an unlicensed ah, psychologist. ah but you play one on this podcast yeah exactly uh just call me dr stella please dr. uh it's funny because i can say that on podcasts but i can't say that on the radio but anyway um i don't know i'm not an expert on ptsd however it seems weird to me that like you would have gone through all that and like how many people has he seen die how many friends how many family members have died in you know the the initial invasion and since you know, everything that's been happening, why suddenly Denny dies, who I don't remember them being that close. Right. And then all of a sudden and, and it's triggered him to like go nuts. <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering if it's not so much the Denny thing alone, but he's just kind of had it in general with this war. Denny well, maybe. Yeah, was but I, and then, and then it used was, it and, as a catalyst. And, but, but here's the catalyst. I think yeah. it was, I think it might've been Tom who fanned that flame a little bit. With his rage speech, I think. Oh, maybe, you think that did it? I'm. I'm gonna bet you that Anthony I, took I, that to heart. I'm gonna bet you that we never get a resolution on that. I, I think it's just gonna. They're just gonna. This is who he is this season, and here we go. And we'll just speculate on why, but I don't think we're ever gonna get an answer. And I don't think we will either. But just Frank's fan theory right now. I'm gonna bet you that Tom's speech there played into it. And because here's something. And this is another kind of psychological thing, but if you see someone that you look up to and respect, or maybe feel like they're your peer at least, kind of go down a dark road or do or commit some act that you would have thought that you wouldn't have approved of before. If you see someone that you look up to doing that, it makes you kind of psychologically justified doing that yourself. So I think Anthony might be going through that, even if there's not like a verbal acknowledgement of that theory of mine somewhere down the road. I'm just saying that's what I'm seeing. That's the way I'm interpreting Anthony's downturn. I'm 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 betting that Tom's um, example in that speech and the way he's been conducting himself, Anthony is seeing that and soaking it up and taking it to heart. That's just what I'm seeing. All right. I think that's a pretty good theory. Thank you, Rob. That means a lot to me. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> After all your crazy theories. Right, right. You're like, uh-oh, maybe I should second guess this. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I better tweak that a little bit. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, Rob respects it. Is that it? Did we talk this one out? Yeah, I think so. Um, well, what do we think is the future with Anthony? Is he going to come around? Is he going, to, or is he really going to go berserk? He's going to go berserk. We've okay. only got six episodes left. He's he's going down the rabbit hole hard. I think Anthony is dead before the end of this series. Wow. I do. Wow, okay. I'm saying Hal, you know, if we're keeping a death toll, I think Hal will go. 
Uh, he's the most likely Mason to die, in my opinion. And I think that that Anthony will die. Uh, we saw Sarah die. Now, she wouldn't have been one of my picks, but it makes sense that she went. Yeah, I could see that. What about Pope? Do you think Pope is going to die before the end of the show? Yes. Ooh. But it will be last episode... And after he's gone to the dark side, it might be one of those redemptive deaths. Okay. Like he ultimately sacrifices himself to kill the last overlord to save humanity, even though up to that point, we've thought he's going to kill Tom or he's going to, you know, there's going to be something else. Because from a literary standpoint or from a character profile standpoint, I don't see Pope being able to integrate smoothly back into a world without... Um, Sarah? No, a world without aliens. No, and I think he'll be he'll he'll be uh, Randy Quaid flying his uh, airplane into the alien mothership. Yeah, yeah, I actually could see that. That would make a lot of sense. So... Look at that, I'm all full of good theories tonight. Uh, you just keep thinking that, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else do we need to talk about there? I feel like there's a lot of like little things that happened tonight or not tonight exactly, but in this <laughs> episode that we're covering tonight, um, I think we covered it. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of going through everything here. We, we talked about the bugs. We talked about the, the oh, here's, we here's what we need to talk about. And yeah. th- here's something because, um, this was another dark conversation, but I, I was glad that it happened where Maggie was talking openly to Hal for once about the Ben situation and why, you know, maybe they're feeling that way. And, and the way she put it when she said, like, we felt just feeling some feeling what it's like to feel, I don't know. I can't even say what she said, but whatever she said and and saying that it's, it's emotional. Yeah. Um, that, you know, I, it's not that I can like relate to that and like, Oh yeah, you're right, girl. But where it's like, Okay, when you put it like that, I can kind of see where you're having a little bit of struggle because I've been putting them both down. Like, what are you guys doing? But now that she just said that, I'm kind of like, okay, I see. Yeah, said like it's it. not a romance or a something they can control. It's some some thing that is connecting them because of what they've gone through. Now, having said that, I still think that uh, other people that know them and know what they're going through are responding inappropriately by not getting them the help that they need to <laughs> right. understand those feelings and not just be like, Oh, you guys just want to make a love triangle. Sure. Yeah. That's appropriate. Like, wait a minute, hold on. This isn't normal. This doesn't just happen. Like let's, let's like seriously talk to whoever might be the best, like psychologist. I don't know if it's Dr. Glass or I don't know if anyone else in the group, but like get some like at least makeshift counseling going on because this is, this is unhealthy. This isn't normal. This is not okay. And I feel like people like Tom are just kind of blowing that off, going, ah, kids are just, uh, I don't, yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, I think there's, I think that needs to be addressed more seriously by more people than just Hal. So the fact that Maggie opened up about that, I, I was, I was glad to hear. And it, what she said, like, it, it struck a chord with me, but I, I'm still sticking to my guns that that's just, it's inappropriate. And Hal and Maggie need to figure that out. And Ben needs to understand his place. Yeah. So I, I'm sticking to my guns on that. But how cr- All right. How compelling was it though when when Ben and Maggie teamed up to take on that overlord? Oh uh, yeah, that was great. Very, very cool scene. That was one of the scenes that I want to reference when I talk about this episode had some you know, and some new moments, some new feelings or uh, yes. you know, they, they took that to a depth that they hadn't before. That conversation, it, that that psychological battle going on there, that was very very fun to watch. Um, the, the lines that were spoken there when, when the overlord says like, you know, I did not invite the female into this circle or whatever. And I was like, Whoa. Um, now let me ask you something real quick. Talking about the overlord. Did it actually have a weapon or was that something Anthony was imagining? Oh, he was totally imagining it. Okay. Cause that to me looked a little bit like that. Uh, remember last season when those two overlords met for a Skype session in hell, we were calling it. Say that and again. Do you remember that scene last season when those two overlords met like, yeah, yeah, that? yeah. In the dream thing. Yeah. But he like, it looked like he took like a handful of dirt and like squeezed it or something. And it, like, oh yeah. That's so what that think... thing looked like to me. You know what? That could be right. So I don't, and Anthony saw it as a weapon, but, but he, he was using something... it. Maybe he was using it to communicate. 
I and, forgot about that entirely. Okay. Because, see, and I, I kind of did, too, because all that talk about the PTSD, and I, it just kind of faded from my mind. But now that I think back to that, I'm kind of going like, well, wait a minute. Was, was that? Ah, see, now there's another point where if we hadn't had this big Brian mishmash that we had, uh, something like this, this little moment could have been explained just a little bit. There could have been something that reminded us of that because that is really a cool idea. Yeah. So, and, and it gives him a reason to, in, to, to, you know, why he was picking that up and freaking out. That That's a good one, man. Well, and let's just think about it. If you're, if you're an overlord in that situation and you kind of don't have a lot of, you know, maybe physical capabilities, you're searching for, you know, un, maybe mental capabilities or whatever these aliens can do. And we know that they've been able to communicate telepathically. Right. Like or if you're an overlord there, wouldn't that be like kind of one of your main things that to try makes, and do? Makes a lot of sense, man. Now, but like on the screen, we didn't really get that. We saw, you know, we saw it and it, you know, it could have just easily been dismissed, but so I'm kind of wondering, is this an idea? Cause I feel like if the show were going to try and take us down that road, they would have showed us more, but the fact I, that they I just, think what you're saying is right, but I think that they're not going to take us down that road and show us anymore. Like they kind of just let us see that a little bit out of the corners of our literary. Right. Eye. Right. That's what I think we're seeing. But but do you think that that's a possibility that that he was actually using that that thing? Yes. Okay. So who then is he talking to? Is he talking to another overlord? Is he talking about what do I do here? Is he talking about get me out of here? What what do you think he would have been saying? Uh, it might have been giving us coordinates. It might have been like, hey, get me out of here, or I am captured. You know, here's what I'm learning while I'm here. Okay. You know? Yeah. So I, I kind of hope that they go back to that because I would like to think that Anthony did see something because I, I know that Anthony's going through stuff, but like, I don't, I don't like the idea that Anthony's like psychotic and that he's uh, imagining things that aren't really there. Like, I, I think if that were a legitimate thing and it goes back to that and Anthony does get some kind of vindication, like, ha, I really did see something. I think that would be a very cool moment. Yeah. I think it would too, but I don't know if we're going to get it. All right. Now, but how compelling was that moment? Still talking about the overlord. Um, when Ben and Maggie were, you know, just really mentally fighting with it like that. And, uh, in storms, none other than Hal. (laughs) And I mean, the look on his face, like what is going on here? Like Ben and Maggie are like hugging and shivering and moaning. And there's an overlord there and dad beating it. And I don't know what's going on here. And just his face, and then and then Tom's face, like, oh crap! Like, what do I do now? Do I stop this? Do I keep going? Do I say, Hal, get out of here? We're busy. <laughs> like, what? You know, he's like, uh, okay, shut this down. And so I just thought that moment was very uh, climactic. Very, I'm gonna. This, I swear, this is the last time I'm gonna use this word tonight. But very compelling. <laughs> I don't think it is. I think you will use it more. You're compelling, Rob. <laughs> I knew it. I win. Uh, All right. So I I think we talked pretty much everything up going into next episode. uh, I mean, the last thing we saw was Pope's face through the fire and flames. The next episode is called uh, Pope Breaks Bad. So I'm guessing he's going to be a major factor in next episode. I have a feeling. You have a feeling because you already saw it. So yes, (laughs) all I can say is get ready. It's a good one, man. You're a good one, man. Uh, uh, thanks, Frank. Do we have anything to report? Uh, Nothing. Social media wise, nobody's nobody's listening anymore. Okay. No, people, people I mean, they are listening. We're, uh, we we get a lot of you know like likes and things, but we're not getting. Uh, nobody really wrote in this week. Whereas in the past, we've had, as you know, we've had audio clips and right, things right. written in. Well, hey, we do this invite week. we do invite you to participate with your thoughts, theories, ideas, questions, comments, concerns, disclaimers, anything that you want to share. Uh, Rob, uh, what's the best way to get in touch with us through email or, uh, you're kind of all over the Twitter. Yeah. You know what? Easiest way for email is just send it right to Southgate media group at gmail.com and put on their, you know, second mass report in the subject. So we know, uh, the other thing is you could do it from the website. 
there is a thing that you can you can send a comment and uh that's at the bottom of every one of the pages doesn't matter which one you go to just go to the bottom of the page write in your comment and put in uh you know your name and stuff and that will also go to that email so it's just an easier way to do it um the website is www.southgatemediagroup.com i think i sped through that but you get the idea uh you can also tweet uh for this it's i man i always get these wrong because we have so many twitter accounts i think it's second mass pod is that correct that sounds right yeah it's second mass pod uh that's for the show and that's where we typically live tweet when we're watching uh and we will also tweet out any new uh, episodes and things there, or if there's news that happens to come up. Uh, you can also find me at our Southgate, and and uh, the company is at SMG Pods, and that's generally Martha tweeting from that, and she live tweets with me typically. So uh, there you go. And Frank, do you have a Twitter? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at DJ Frank Stella. I'd love to hang out there and. Uh... I think we're about golden. Uh, next I'd episode say that's it, man. is called Pope Breaks Bad. And by the way, Falling Skies is on TNT Sunday nights, 9 p.m. Central. Uh, check your local listings and uh, just enjoy the ride. So the Falling Skies podcast, the second master report, is a production of the Southgate Media Group. Until next episode, stay vigilant, stay active, and stay brave. <laughs>